I've got a valuable crop of hay sitting out in the field and to tell you guys the truth, I'm gonna feel a lot better once it's here in the barn. The problem is, is that I can't get any of the hay moved until I fix this back wall here on the barn because it's gonna be just a lot easier to do this when there's nothing in the barn. So today, my goal is to at least get started fixing this. And then I've got a bunch of junk here on the side of the barn that I need to clean out as well. So there's a lot that needs to be done before hay can be put in this barn. Today we're getting started. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. First thing that needs to be done is I need to pull this old tin off of the back of the barn here. Obviously I've got my piece that's folded back, but if you kind of look at the right angle, you can see that a lot of this tin is bowed in. And what this is from is this is the pen that I was keeping my bull in prior to breeding season and he was getting a little restless. And this is what a restless bull does. I'm hopeful that I can straighten some of this tin because Lord knows it is expensive and even the stuff you buy now is not thick like this old stuff is. So I'm hoping that I can salvage it. My other plan is to put some extra boards across the wall here um, because when I'm working cows in this corral, if I try to chase them in this gate, a lot of times they'll, they'll kind of spin a circle right here to turn around and I think they hit the barn as well when that happens. So I'm gonna add a little bit, bit of reinforcement so that hopefully this doesn't happen again. One problem that I'm noticing though is as I start peeling this tin off of the side of the barn, there's an active wasp nest up here in the seam and you know we're at a pretty warm part of the day now so I can't really spray those guys right this second, but I'm gonna try to get as much off of here as I can. And if they become an issue, then we'll just kinda have to put a pin in this and come spray those guys in the morning. Over the years, I've come in here with foam sealer to try to fill in these voids so that wasps wouldn't make nests in the tin. And now that foam is kind of gluing all the tin together. So not only do I have to worry about nails and screws, but I gotta get foam off too. Oh, there might be a nail in there still. I'm pretty sure there's another uh, nail up on the top of that tin and I can't get to it. So I'm gonna try to come in on the other side of the barn here and see if I can pop that loose. There's one less to worry about. I've made pretty decent progress here. I've only actually got one more piece of uh, tin that I want to get down. The problem is, is that I think I'm encroaching on a really big wasp nest because there's a lot more of them flying around now than there have been and they're all kind of ducking up into that corner, which is part of the next piece that I need to get off. So I'm a little worried that once I do rip that down that a ton of them are gonna boil out of there and I just, you know, I just don't really feel like dealing with that today. I think I'm gonna quit here for today and start working on cleaning out the other side of the barn. Between the wing here where I'm standing and the main part of the barn, uh, my grandpa used to have a little divider up here because he would stack all of his small square bales in the main part of the barn. And then here in the wing on the side, he would store firewood and his baler and a couple other pieces of equipment. I, on the other hand, have chose to store round bales here in the wing. So what I'm doing is I'm taking down some of this barrier that divides the two parts of the barn. The reason for that being, well, 
a couple reasons, <laughs> as usual. It's gonna make stacking the round bills in here a little bit easier because I won't be having this divider to deal with. But then also when it comes time to clean out the barn, it's a lot better because I don't have anything on the ground that's gonna be in the way of me trying to rake up the old hay. I've gotten most of this down already off camera and I'm down to actually this last board here. This is a nice thick, I think two by 10 here and I don't need it here anymore to divide this part of the barn. So I'm thinking what I will probably end up doing with it is using it on the back of the barn where I'm replacing the tin. A nice heavy board like that will make, will, will add a lot of strength to that wall and make it a lot better. Now, I think that was all of them. Right, this is starting to look a lot better. In fact, I feel like I could put hay in the wing here if I wanted to. I think I'm gonna call it here for today. We'll come back in the morning and get going on that wall and I'm hoping I can finish tomorrow. We'll just have to wait and see. It's the next day now. It's a lot cooler, a lot nicer today. Uh, the only thing is I do have some planes going in the background. So I apologize if that comes through on the audio. I came down here first thing this morning and got hopefully all of my wasps sprayed and killed and they shouldn't be an issue today unless there's some that I miss, which I'm sure there are. But I went ahead and got these other pieces of tin down and I think I'm about to the point where I can start to rebuild this wall. One issue that I have noticed is that some of these boards are kind of like separating off of the posts and I don't know if uh, there was ever a haystack that was dropped on this wall or if maybe when they were putting the haystacks in they pushed up against it or something but somehow these boards got pushed off of the posts. Now, when you're working on an old barn like this there's always more than you expect. I think the first thing that we'll do is address this uh, this top I don't know brace frame whatever you want to call it. Yeah because I mean you can even tell too like the whole wall kind of shakes when I've been peeling this tin off. I could tell something wasn't right. So it'll be good to get that fixed while we're here. And then hopefully this will last several more years and maybe my grandkids can fix it. Oh, 
Well, the shovel pry bar doesn't really seem to be working that good, so I've got another idea. Maybe that'll work. If I can get a lag screw in there, I'm doing it. That board's probably hanging on better now than it ever has. So um, now, see if I can do the same thing on the other side. There we Well, there you have it. I think I'm pretty much done with the framing portion of this project, if we can even call this framing, I don't know. And it's definitely not gonna be winning any beauty contests, but kind of my my goal here, or I guess what, what I was trying to do was to not go buy new material, because I had this, this old stuff um, and I just wanted to reuse it. And I thought that this was a pretty good, good place to do that. This wood, while it may not look pretty, is actually cut really thick and it's still got a lot of life in it because it's been undercover ever since it's been installed. So I think for what we're doing with it here, it's gonna work perfectly. And yeah, let's go ahead and put the tin back up. Believe it or not, I was actually able to straighten this tin out, at least to get it straight enough to where I could hang it back up. I'm actually pretty happy about this because I figure if I was to go buy all this tin new, and keep in mind, this is the heavy gauge stuff because back in the old days, that's all they used. They didn't have this paper thin tin like we have now. But to go buy this new today, I'm guessing would be somewhere around $400. So I feel like I can tolerate some creases and you know, rust and things like that. And hey, you know, it matches the rest of the barn. So now no one will ever even know there was a repair here. Well, I think I finished this up just in time because it's starting to warm up and now we're working in the sun. So it's only going to get worse. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. And I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.